I'm just so happy that finally I'm able to make this video and recommend to you a quality, affordable, continuous light solution. What's shaking bacon? I'm Jonah Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And like I said, this video has been a long time coming because I have wanted to be able to recommend to you all a quality continuous light source that's also affordable but looks great. But now just a little bit of backstory because when I first started this channel two years ago, I was using the Westcott Flex Matte, the LED, it's two by two. It's a gorgeous light. I have been super happy with it, well worth the investment for me. But the problem was I just never felt 100% good about recommending that light because so many of you here on the Bite Shot are just starting out in your food photography careers. You're not making a ton of money at this. You're not, I mean, maybe some of you are independently wealthy. Kudos to you. Uh, but for everybody else, you need something that's more affordable. And the problem with the Westcott is that's like a $2,000 light. And so I thought, oh, I just don't feel good about recommending that to people feeling like they have to spend that kind of money to get a good quality artificial continuous light source. Now, if you're curious about any of my gear, I've got everything listed, like everything I own and use, it's all linked in the description box below. Uh, there might be a couple of things that have been recent additions. I should go back through and re-review, make sure it's accurate, but by and large, everything I use is all linked on that gear page. So I just always felt like, oh, I, I mean, I love my Westcott, but I just feel like there's gotta be something that's more affordable that's gonna do a great job for you. And two, I'm just remembering now that it was Black Friday this last year and my friend Kevin over at Kevin is Cooking, he he reached out and said, Joni, it's Black Friday. There are sales going on. I want to buy that kit of the light that you use, but it looks like it's discontinued. So <laughs> between it being expensive and discontinued, I was like, I got, I got to come up with something. Well, fortunately, my friend and yours, Skylar over at We Eat Together, put out a video a number of months ago all about using the Godox LED lights. And I thought, oh, we are onto something here because any of you who are familiar with the lights that I shoot here in the studio, my strobes, they are all Godox. And so I thought, okay, this could be good. So of course, watch Skylar's video, went and followed his link, and I saw he was using the Godox SL60. Uh, I can't remember the letters and numbers and all that things, but it's the 60 watt unit. They also have a 100 watt unit, and then they have a 150 watt unit. So of course, which one did I go with? I went with the 150 watt, uh, which honestly to me was a great solution because it's also very affordable. I mean, for that particular unit, it's only $250. In the context of photography gear, $250 ain't a whole lot of money. So now at this point, I've been using this light for the last four months. So any video you've seen on this channel for the last four months, uh, or if you're in my online course, all of that was shot with this light. And so then too, I also feel like I have a pretty good handle after four months on what are the pros and cons with this light. So first and foremost, it's super easy to set up and to operate. You, know, you pull it right out of the box, stick it on a light stand, plug in the AC power, flip a switch, and you're off to the races. And then you can also adjust the output on it. So it's got a dimmer. So like, for example, right now, I've got it running at 70%. It's a really bright light. So I've got it at 70%. Here's the current settings that I'm using on the camera just to give you a sense of a baseline, but I could make it brighter if I needed to. That, of course, being the very specific advantage of going with the more powerful unit. But probably plenty of you, if you're on more of a constrained budget, you do have the option of the 100 watt or the 60 watt. Those will still do a great job too. Now, one of the things that was super important to me and you really got to pay attention to in terms of LED lights and one of the things you got to be careful of with cheaper LED lights is making sure that the color is accurate, that that CRI, the color rendering index is a 90 plus. And so this particular unit has a 93. And of course now having used it for the last four months, I've not had any issues with color cast or flickering or any of those other things that sometimes cheaper LEDs will struggle with. Now I went with the daylight balanced light which is 5600 Kelvin. One of the nice things and advantages with that is that you can also combine it with natural light and you won't have any color issues as well. But if you prefer, you can get the tungsten unit. Again, just making sure that you're appropriately setting your white balance when you're using these lights. Now, one of my favorite things about this light though is the ability to manipulate and shape the light with a modifier depending on the mood that I'm going for. So just like when I'm shooting with my flashes, I'm using soft boxes. And so those same exact soft boxes that I use with my flashes 
Those are all Bowen's mount, which is a pretty typical standard mount style uh, that all those same exact soft boxes that I use on my flashes, I can also use on this unit. So it's just giving me kind of double duty in that situation. And so if I want something that's really light and airy and soft, I'm gonna use a 55 inch octagon soft box, get that nice wrap around effect. Uh, right now I'm going for something a little more middle of the road. So I've got a 35 inch square on there. If I wanted something really moody, I could go for my little strip soft box, my 12 by 36. Six. But what's great is that I can use those same exact modifiers that I use on my flashes, I can use on this guy too. Now one of the cons of this unit though is that it does have a fan that is constantly running that you can actually hear. So if you are shooting video that has audio going with it, depending on your microphone and your setup, you might start to pick up that sound of that fan that might not be the best thing. Now, fortunately at this point, I haven't had any feedback in the last four months, anybody saying, hey, what's that fan in the background? Probably there's some audio nerds out there who've picked it up and who are just kind enough not to say anything. Um, but at the end of the day, depending on your setup, your style, your situation, what you're doing, you might want to consider that that fan could be a problem for you, in which case then an LED panel that doesn't have a fan and run silent would be a better solution for you. So taking all of that into consideration then, my top favorite thing about this unit and why I'm so excited to recommend it is that it is so affordable that for that 150 watt unit it's only $250 but then other than the light the only accessories that you're going to need is a light stand so you know maybe another 30 bucks on top of that and then something to modify it with and whether that be a reflector diffuser or that be you know some sort of soft box whatever that solution is that ultimately for less than $400 you're getting a great continuous light solution that is super affordable. So now if you do end up going with this unit or you already own an artificial light and you're having a hard time making it look the way you want it to look, well definitely check out this video up over here where I give you some really helpful tips and tricks to make artificial light look more natural. But thanks as always for showing up. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay out of trouble. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.